So I want to talk to you about like what self-confidence is to you. And I would love, you know, there are so many myths out there about confidence, especially confidence for black women. And I would love to hear, you know, what your confidence is and how you handle the myths that we face on a regular basis. Absolutely. So for me, confidence is really all about honoring my commitments to myself. Confidence to me is knowing that this may happen over there. This person might say this, this person might do that. This job might do what they do. But at the end of the day, Bianca got Bianca and Bianca's going to be all right. Yes. To me, that is confidence. (laughs) And I feel like we live in this world where we think that confidence is about the way you look. We think confidence is about success. We think it's about how much money you have, or we think it's, we think it's some like external thing. And there's just not enough people. Luckily we have Amber who is doing this, but there's just like not enough people who are talking about how confidence comes from within. And the beautiful thing is that confidence is a skill. And like, once that hit me, I was like, oh, it's a skill? I can learn this? I can do this? And it's funny because, and I did a live video on my Instagram about this a few months ago, but it's funny because even throughout this journey, like full transparency, personally, my body confidence, it's been... Yeah, it's, like, it's, just, it's, it's been like this, yeah. right? Like, and it hasn't been where I would have liked it to be. And recently over these past few months, it actually just one day just hit me. I was like, Bianca, you have not like obsessed about your weight. You haven't really thought anything negative about your body. Like this, it's been a while. And I was like, what's going on? Like what's been happening? Because as you all know, that, that just sometimes becomes the norm, right? Right. It's what it's supposed to be. You're supposed to worry about your body all day long. That's what the world tells us. Oh my God, Amber, when you were at my house and you said, but what if you just weren't struggling with your weight anymore? And I was like, what if it, what if it's not a struggle? I was like, what, what do you (laughs) like? (laughs) Completely, completely mind blown. And it's funny because some, listen, if you're, if you are a black woman out there listening to this and you're like, yeah, yeah that's easy for you to say no it's not I want to be very clear it is not easy for me to say but what I will tell you I remember when we were sitting there because we were doing the imposter syndrome workshop right yeah we were doing it in person and I said that to her and I remember you kind of like teared up at it you were like and it was almost like it didn't even cross my mind that not struggling with my weight or my body image was a possibility because it had been a part part of my identity for so long like because I allowed that to be like I I took that on for, you know, multiple reasons, but right. Like for so long, that was just part of who I am. Like I was, I was another woman out here struggling with weight. Like it was just, it was the thing to do. It was the thing to be. And like hearing you say that was such a shock to me. And even back then, right. So like I'm I'm pondering it, but in the back of my mind, I'm like, she's crazy. I'm I'm like, I'm like, what? Like what you, what you mean? But how? But, but, but how? how? See, that's the part is that the concept is there. And then people go, I, I, no one's ever taught me that my body image couldn't, doesn't need to be a struggle, right? I think that's what, one of the beautiful things that I'm seeing in messaging for children nowadays, at least on my feed and the, the woke ass parents that I got around me, um, yeah. is that they're really taking a stance with their own children and even asking about it like in school, like, hey, we're we like we're not focusing on bodies, you know, like, you know, when 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 my kid is trying on clothes, it's not, oh, you look cute or oh, you look great. It's how do you feel in these pants? You know, how do you feel wearing this shirt? Does it itch you? Is it com- comfy? Is it too tight right here? How do you feel? Not what you look like. And then also trying to establish, you know, those words of affirmation around that, them as a character, as a personality versus this is how you look. Or like even negatively, like, oh, your hair's nappy, go take care of it. It's like, hey, do you need some help doing your hair? So, you know, those kinds of things, the way that you say things, especially to children are so impactful. And there's always been, I mean, I grew up with, you know, friends, parents who used to comment on all of our bodies all the time, like, oh, getting a little chubby there, right? 
like I played water polo and I swam for six years in high school and college and not a single like meet or practice or something went by where someone didn't say something about how either I look too big in my suit or I look like I had lost some weight in my suit. And I was like, cool, like swimming, like my being in the pool, you know, swimming, like I'm an athlete. I'm trying to be an athlete here. I'm trying to win games here. And all you could talk about, I was like, oh, you look cute in your suit. It's like, it definitely damaged me. And those, those concepts around, you know, not having to struggle with it anymore it's really hard to think about how that can be because of all the messaging that we receive, right? Again, going back to cultivating social media pages or a cultural, uh, social media, cultural, a social media landscape that, that supports you rather than puts you in this place of where, I mean, you, I feel like you hit the nail on the head, which is like, I thought they were motivating me when they were actually making me feel like shit. And some people think that feeling like, like shit is a motivation. Well, if you feel like shit, then that's motivation to not feel like shit anymore. So you're going to do something different, right? Like, that's just fire on the fire. Like you're not oh, going to get out of it. Too. I used to do that. Yeah. And you know, I, I'm with you and I, you know, I'll share a little bit of my story too, but I was super tiny, thin, like, like a little pencil growing up. And then somewhere around fifth grade, I was butterball and I stayed pretty butterball until I got to high school. And then even then it was like, I got taller, but I was still chubby all over. And then I had my own battles with eating disorders, like my late teens, early twenties. And I got super duper skinny, super skinny. And then I kind of like evened out again, somewhere in the middle where it was like, I was always kind of thin, but I always had my pooch and like, whatever the hell these are. And I was like, yeah, it's fine. And then when my partner passed away, I gained 35, almost 40 pounds. And I didn't even realize it because it was just trauma weight and stress weight and eating weight and not exercising and not feeling good and being like in that very emotional traumatic state for over two years. And then I got to the point where I was like, I don't want to carry my death weight anymore. So I'm going to try and like take it off. And then of course I'm in my thirties. So it's a, it's a little bit trickier to get weight off compared to how it used to be. And then I started going back into those like really unhealthy and harmful styles of trying to lose weight. And I did that for two years. And then I was like, what are you doing? You literally are wasting your life right now. You are wasting mm -hmm. time being unhappy and, and chasing this weight loss goal instead of, again, you hit it on the head, chasing healthiness and allowing your body to settle into whatever your body's going to settle in when you are incorporating healthy habits into your life. That's it. That's the fucking message. Why are we following weight or shape or size when what we should be following is health, nutrition? And I know that this isn't something that goes along with health and nutrition a lot of the times, but joy and happiness and fulfillment and allowing all of those things to come around and, and, and support us in creating our confidence as human beings, as women, as Black women, and as people. Oh, oh my own I, little tirade. <laughs> no, no, it, everything you said was amazing. And I have to, like, I'm like, Bianca, we're not going to get emotional. But whenever <laughs> you said, whenever you were talking about, you know, like wasting time and wasting life, like that, that was one of the biggest wake up calls for me is recognizing that I was literally missing out on life. Yes. Because I was so obsessed with how yes. I look. And to all the Black women out there listening, if you are so obsessed with your weight, that you're not going to certain events, you're not dating, you're not wearing certain things, you're not, you're, listen, the queen of, I'll take the picture because I was, <laughs> I didn't want to be in the picture. Yeah. If you're not taking pictures, like realizing that you had these amazing experiences and you didn't take picture because, because you were like, oh, well, my face is chubby right now. Oh, look at my second chin. Oh, like I don't have, oh, look, my, look, poop was showing in the photo. I don't like my stomach in that. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> Literally, that, Amber, that was such a wake up call for me. The recognition that like, Bianca, you're missing out on life. You're not. And fully, people. You're literally, missing out on people. You're missing out on experiences. experiences. You're missing out on. And what is life? Well, I mean, if you're not having experiences, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing here? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, honestly. If you, I swear to listen, if y'all don't take anything away from this entire podcast, I'm going to tell you right now, please, please stop missing out on life because 
of what everybody else is telling you is healthy, what everybody else is telling you is sexy, is, is perfect, and know that you can show the fuck up as who you are right fucking now and have a great fucking time. All right, enough F-bombs for like this one minute. <laughs> no, but I really am.